Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjadri in this video we will learn what determines the demand for goods and services. Dear scholars still now we have seen that what determines the level of production and how the income from production is distributed to workers and owners of capital. Now we are starting our discussion again with our circular diagram that we have a household, government and the firm. Uh, household uh, make the consumptions uh, in the goods and services market and these goods and services uh, are produced by the firm and firm gets revenue from the goods and services markets and then the firm pay the factor of payments and these factor of payments um, become the income of the household and then household make the more consumption and pay taxes to the government and make private saving and these taxes are the revenue of the government and the, then the government and uh, make two type of spending that sometime government make uh, uh, government purchases in goods and services market and sometime government make the public saving that will create the investment process in the economy and uh, the household private saving will become the source of revenue for the financial market and financial market provide the loans uh, to the firms and the household and the household make the investment in the housing sector and the firm make the investment uh, in uh, in the extension of their businesses or new factories so there are four main component of gdp while discussing about our our previous circular diagram we have here y is equal to c plus i plus n x here we have c is the, is the consumption i is the investment and g is the government purchases government expenditure and n x is the net export the circular flow diagram contains only first three components but now to simplify the analysis we assume our economy is closed economy a country that does not trade with other country thus net exports are zero we will examine the open economy in our coming videos so uh, to make it easy we are here supposing a closed economy a closed economy has three uses for the goods and services it produces these three components of GDP are expressed in a national income account identity. We can call it Y is equal to C plus I plus D. Households consume some of the economy's output forms and the household use some of the output for investment and the government buys some of the output uh, for the public purposes. We want to see how GDP is allocated among these three uses. So let's start the discussion with consumption. We eat food, we are clothing or go to a movie, we are consuming some of the output of the economy. All forms of the consumption together make up about two-third of GDP because consumption is so large macroeconomists have devoted much energy to study how household decide how much to consume. Uh, in coming session we will discuss uh, the detail uh, of the consumption function. Here we consider the simplest story of the consumer behavior. Household receive income from their labor and their ownership of capital, pay taxes to the government and then decide how much of their after tax income to consume and how much to save. The income that household receive equals the output of the economy. Why? The government then uh, tax household at uh, an amount of See, although the government imposed many kinds of taxes such as personal and corporate taxes and sales taxes for uh, but for the simplicity we are supposing that the uh, uh, we are getting the lumps of all the taxes so income after the payments of all taxes we have y minus t that is a disposable income uh, household divide their disposable income between consumption and saving. 
here we assume that uh, uh, the level of consumption depends directly on the level of disposable income a higher level of disposable income leads to a greater consumption so thus our consumption function become as c is equal to c into y minus t this equation state that the consumption is a function of disposable income the relationship between the consumption and disposable income is called the consumption function marginal productive uh, uh, propensity to consume mpc the marginal propensity to consume mpc is the amount by which consumption changes when disposable income increases by one dollar the mpc is between zero and one and extra dollar of income increases consumption by uh, uh, but by less than one dollar thus if household obtain an extra dollar of income they save a proportion of it okay for example if the mpc is 0 0.7 then the household spends 70 cent of each additional dollar of disposable income on consumer goods and services and save 30 cents here we have a graphical presentation of, of consumption and disposable income. Uh, the consumption function relate, uh, uh, relate the consumption to disposable income y minus t here. We have here uh, marginal propensity to consume is amount by which consumption increase when disposable income, income increases by one dollar so uh, the slope of the consumption function tells uh, how much consumption increases when disposable income increases by one dollar that is the slope of the consumption function is MPC investment both firms and household purchases investment goods the firm by investment goods to add to their stock of capital and to replace existing capital as it wears out household by new houses which are also part of investment so the total investment when we are talking about the US case the total investment in the United States average about 15% of GDP okay the quantity of investment uh, goods demanded depends on the interest rate which measures the cost of the funds used to finance investment for an investment project uh, to be a profitable its term must exceed its cost if the interest rate rises uh, uh, fewer investment projects are profitable and the quantity of investment goods demanded falls so for example suppose a firm is considering whether it should build a 1 million factory that would yield a, a, a 100,000 per year uh, or 10 person uh, the firm compares uh, this return to the cost of borrowing the 1 million if the investment rate is below 10 person the firm borrows the money in financial markets and make the investment if the interest rate is above 10 percent the firm far goes and invest a opportunity and does not build the factory the firm make the same investment decision even if it does not have to borrow the one million dollar from the bank but rather than use its own fund, the firm can always deposit this money in a bank or uh, money market fund and earn interest on it. Building the factory is more profitable than depositing the money if and only if the interest rate is less than 10% return on the factory. A person wanting to buy a new house uh, faces a similar decision the higher the interest rate the greater the cost of carrying the mortgage of one hundred thousand dollar uh, mortgage cost uh, eight thousand per year if the interest is eight percent and 
ten thousand per year if the interest rate is ten percent. As the interest rate rises, the cost of borrowing a home is also rises. Okay, when studying the role of interest rate in the economy, economists distinguish between nominal interest rate and real interest rate. This distinction is relevant when overall level of prices is changing. The nominal interest rate is the interest rate as usually reported. It is the rate of interest that investor pay to borrow money. The real rate interest rate is the nominal interest rate corrected for the effects of inflation. If the nominal interest rate is 8% and inflation rate is 3% then the real interest rate is 5%. The relationship between nominal and real interest rate uh, will be discussed in coming videos. Here, uh, it is sufficient to note that the real interest rate measures the true cost of borrowing and thus determine the quantity of investment. Then, an equation relating investment I to the real interest rate become as uh, I is the function of interest rate. The graphical presentation of investment function here we have uh, dependent variable real interest uh, independent variable real interest rate and dependent variable is quantity of investment. So the investment function reveal the quantity of investment I to the real interest rate. Investment depends on real interest rate because the interest rate is the cost of borrowing. The investment function slope downward when the interest rate rises fewer investment projects are profitable okay the many different interest rate here are uh, uh, some variance interest rate differs in there uh, in three ways the first one terms our term some loans in the economies are for short period of time even as short as overnight other loans are uh, are for 30 years or even longer the interest rate on a loan depends on its term long run interest rate are usually but not always higher than short run interest rate credit risk in deciding whether to make a loan a lender make uh, must take into account the profitability that the borrower will repay. The law allows borrowers to default on their loans by deciding bankruptcy. The higher the perceived profitability of default, the higher the interest rate because the safest credit risk is the government. Uh, government bonds tends to pay a low interest rate at the other extreme financially shaky corporation can raise funds only by issuing junk bonds which pay a high interest rate to compensate for the uh, high risk of default. Tax treatment. The interest on different types of bonds is taxed differently. Most important when state and local government issue bonds called municipal bonds the holders of the bonds do not pay federal income tax on the interest income because of this tax advantage municipal bonds pay a lower interest rate okay when uh, when you find different types of interest rate you can almost uh, always explain difference of considering these term the credit risk and the tax treatment and uh, the terms although there are many different interest rate in the economy macroeconomists can uh, usually ignore uh, the distinction between these interest rate the variant interest rate tends to move up and down together uh, for many purpose we will not go far or wrong by assuming there is only one interest rate government purchases Government purchases are the third component of demand for goods and services. The federal government buys guns, missiles and 
services of government implies local governments buy library books uh, build schools and hire teachers government at all levels build roads and other public works so all these transactions make up uh, government purchases uh, of goods and services which normally in case of United States counts the total of 20% of GDP but in case of developing country this scenario is a very different and very alarming okay these, pur uh, these purchases uh, by the government uh, there are some other purchases are uh, like uh, the transfer payment to household for the welfare of the poor and the social security payment for the elderly unlike government purchases transfer payments are not made in exchange for some of the economy's outputs of goods and services therefore they are not included in our G transfer payments do not affect the demand for goods and services indirectly the transfer payments are the opposite of taxes they increase household disposable income just as taxes reduce disposable income thus an increase in transfer payments uh, financed by an increase in, uh, in tax leaves disposable income unchanged now we uh, review revising the definition of t to equal taxes minus transfer payments uh, disposable income is equal to y minus t in includes both the negative impact of taxes and positive impact of transfer payments so if government purchases equal taxes minus transfer payment then uh, government uh, revenue and government uh, expenditure are equal to each other and the government has a balanced budget if g our government expenditure exceeds t the government runs a budget deficit which is in funded uh, funds by issuing government debt that is by borrowing in financial markets but if government expenditure is less than t the government runs a budget surplus which uh, it can use to repay some of outstanding debt here we do not uh, try to explain the political process that leads to particular fiscal policy that is uh, to the level of government purchases and taxes instead we take government purchases and taxes as exogenous variable to denote that these variables are fixed uh, uh, here because these belong to outside our model of national income so we can write it um, g is equal to g prime or g overhead or t is equal to t prime or t bar uh, we do not however want to examine the impact of fiscal policy on on endogenous variable which are determined within the model the endogenous variables here are consumption investment and interest rate to see how the exogenous variable affect the endogenous variable we uh, we must complete the model uh, so this is uh, the subject of another discussion which we will complete in our coming video so this is all about uh, what determines the demand for goods and services we have uh, uh, consumption investment and government purchases so see you with another video ciao